Hello, and welcome to D&D Character Portraits. Today we shall be drawing Ka'ala Shin, Shin, the Shakti... T? Is that how you say it? Oh, shit, I don't know. Hi, my name is Josh Rodriguez, and I'm an artist currently pursuing my bachelor's in studio art at Cal State Long Beach. I love d and I'm currently a DM for two different campaigns that have been playing tabletop RPG since 2013. So when the opportunity for me to make a character design portfolio came about, I knew it had to be filled with all sorts of d and character designs. What you'll be seeing here today is a time lapse of a commissioned d and character portrait I drew. I'll be giving some commentary as well as some drawing and Photoshop tutorials along the way. I'll probably also say a bunch of random sh** too, but hey, at least I won't be saying anything mean or racist. By the way, go support Black Lives Matter. So, without further ado, here's today's portrait. Randy. You know him. You love him. Actually, none of you may know who he is. Randy Axner is a longtime friend of mine and one of my upcoming groomsmen. He currently plays in one of my campaigns, The Boys in the Forgotten Realms. To help flesh out my character design portfolio, as well as create images I can use in commission advertising, I chose to draw portraits of all of my players' characters. I started with Randy's character, Shin, the Blue Dragonborn Sorcerer Paladin. Shin comes from a noble family who unfortunately happened to be Dragonborn supremacists and underground slavers. Not good. After realizing the evils within his racist-ass family, he left his noble luxuries behind to seek out adventure. So what I started out with, I just wanted to get a good... Hang on a second. I had to mute myself because I could hear the feedback of my recording. Anyways, so I started out with trying to figure out a pose of Shin. So... Yes, he is a dragonborn, which means he is basically a, a scaly version of a furry, which is totally cool, no judgment whatsoever. So that means he's going to have a humanoid body, uh, and then the head and some other features are going to be animalistic. In this case, well, I'll stop talking. Uh, first, I want to point out that right now I'm trying to um, get a pose going on. It does kind of look like he's hiling, so I kind of stopped it, and I didn't like that. So I was thinking, okay, let me try to put him in that dynamic pose. And here I was just kind of sketching out the basics of what his body would look like. Now, I'm not, I'm only accustomed to drawing humanoids, not anything with anthropomorphic, um, cape, what's the word of characteristics? Yeah, that's what I'm looking to say. Um, so here we see I'm resizing, trying to get anatomy down. By the way, if you ever have the chance to read the book Anatomy for the Artist, uh, I believe it's by Discovery Book, it is so good. It is basically a figure drawing Bible. Um, I highly recommend it. I had it open the entire time I was drawing uh, because I wasn't sure where exactly. Because if you look at the distance between the shoulders and the deltoids, which are the muscles and the shoulders, uh, excuse me, I mean the pecs and the deltoids i believe it's too wide but if you want to go for that characteristically you can totally do that especially because dragonborns are pretty big they're like around six to seven feet oh yeah i was getting frustrated so i wrote fuck yes i would also like to point out that why while i was going to change the pose i decided to because it's hard not to use a picture reference sometimes i decided to have uh, my wonderful fiance alexa take a picture of me and I used this picture right here as my reference as the pose that I decided to go with for Shin. And at the bottom you can see our dog Ollie. He is a potato and he is a little baby. You know, looking back at that, I was talking pretty fast. Anyway, so I started to sketch out the pose that I was going for. Uh, if you know what the term foreshortening is, you know that it is absolute um, of Satan. Basically, uh, unless you're a nice person of Satan. Regardless, basically, if you look at the uh, torso, it's going downward and away from the eye, which means that it's not exactly um, as proportional as you would imagine a regular standing up body would be. So I had to go in and it makes weird shapes. Um, at this point, I was trying to figure out the distance between the deltoids and the pecs again, uh, as I was saying before, because proportions matter for everything. Um, lol. 
and at this point I was trying to I think I yeah I finished the exact sketch of the whole thing and now I was deciding I'm gonna go in with line work for detail um, I want to point out that this part one is only line work though I do with my commissions I can offer um, line work or fully black and white rendered or color rendered um, I know I'm kind of selling myself here I hate advertising but what are you gonna do regardless going back in uh, so I was looking specifically at blue dragons when coming up with a blue dragonborn design. We thought, like working with Randy, we thought we were going to have him have uh, dreadlocks because the um, the dragonborn in the player's handbook has dreadlocks and it looks pretty cool. But I decided against that just because of how the pose was set up and I didn't want to have to worry about um, gravity and the movement of the hair at that time or... I think it would be like scaly hair, I'm not entirely sure. Because I wanted to have this pose be, as I said before, dynamic, to where it feels like it's moving, but it's not moving. Um, and so here I decided to just go really into detail with um, mimicking what I've seen uh, with artwork of the ancient blue dragon as seen in the monster manual, um, and then what I was trying to uh, combine it with with the Dragon Morden in the player's handbook as well as other fan art I've seen online. Oh, I wrote you uh, Dragon Morden do have four fingers and four toes uh, on each Toe and hand so that was important for me to remember Also, I went back and forth between Google and this looking at different types of shield designs um, One thing that's really important about character design that I learned actually last year is when you're designing clothes props that they're using anything in that regard you want to know what the purpose of each thing is here i'm starting to go into detail with uh, the clothes and the shield uh so as i said before shin is a noble so i decided to look into the time period that i think my campaign is mainly reflecting on which i believe is around 1600s ad or yeah ad is the proper term um, and the attire that I was looking for was, uh, unfortunately I picked European, um, nobles clothes because unfortunately a lot of D&D campaigns these days are basically based off of, uh, Europe and it could be reflected off of anywhere in the world. And I hope we see more, um, Asian, Australian, or well, indigenously Australian. I'm getting off track, but basically we need more exposure into, uh, campaigns of, whether it's homebrew or what you're referencing in your actual module. But yeah, so I decided to make Shin's clothes look like um, noble's clothes that people in 1600s Europe would wear, uh, which is why I was going for silks and a lot of different patterns. Um, now, one thing I'll point out that I didn't realize at the time, the right hand is too big. Uh, if you look at the the sketch version of the left hand it is much smaller even though it's in a fist compared to the right hand uh, this is something I picked up on later and I will go back in on and also design wise I have the legs and the morning star and the tail too close to each other which is why later on I went back in and moved the tail out um, it's not good to have things so close to each other um, and here's where I started doing texture uh, he has, so he's a sorcerer and a paladin and a noble. Um, so he's got the noble's clothes and he started out as a sorcerer and then multiclassed into paladin, which means he was able, well, in his specific case, he decided to get some chainmail, but he wanted to have it underneath his noble, uh, outfit. So I had basically the sleeves of a noble's outfit removed and then I put the chainmail coming out from underneath there. Uh, kind of to give it that noble flair, but also a warrior at the same time, which is why he's also wielding a shield and a morning star. Some of you might have been thinking, hey, sorcerers can't have shields and morning stars? Well, sorcerer, paladin, multiclass. Um, anyway, so here it was a bit tedious. Hey, this is about maybe like 900 times faster than it was in person, so if this looks tedious, hey, just imagine what it was like actually drawing it. This is why artists deserve to be paid. Uh, fill it in with that dog. Oh, I like what I write sometimes. I figured at times when things don't really need explanation, I'll just shut up. 
get to listen to the nice classical music. Oh, I should have silenced my phone. Whoops. Oh, I should point out that I tried to darken in the areas where I thought the chains would crease itself. Also, for some weird reason, when I'm capturing footage, uh, some of the screen got cropped out. I mean, we're still able to see it viewed, but yeah, it did that on this version. It got better later. It got better. And so yeah, I had the sketched version of the design, and now I'm going over it with finer line, as I said previously. So the arm is basically done. This is when I just realized, oh, I need to change the distance between the Morning Star and the tail. The distance between the Morning Star and the leg, I think, is okay because of the negative space, which is the area around the leg and the Morning Star. It's fairly interesting. And I think part of me was just like, eh, I don't want to do it. I can be lazy in art, and I think a lot of artists can be lazy, and we're like, you know what, let's find an easier way to design things. And that is completely valid, I say, because we have to draw so many things, and in studio jobs where they may not be unionized, and you have to, like, cram like crazy to get things done, uh, working smarter and not harder, which is one of my uh, professors always says, um, is something that is so essential. So, you can see where it said chains. I originally was going to have chainmail going down uh, towards the knee because traditionally that's where chainmail goes. Um, because I, starting with the part one of this, which was, what, because this picture in particular, I was doing the line work version, the black and white rendered version, which hasn't been finished yet, and the colored rendered version, which also hasn't been finished yet. I was doing this three different times for Shin because um, I wanted to use it, as I said earlier, as a, uh, part of the advertising of the commissions itself. Um, but I decided to get rid of the lower chainmail because, oh, by the way, feet are very hard to draw sometimes. Think about the arch in the foot more than anything else, and that should help you uh, come up with the general shape and mass of it. Um, but anyways, I figured it would be less distracting if I had two layers of chainmail uh, because I'm not rendering this picture and so I decided I would just continue on this uh, silk pantaloon kind of thing that nobles wore instead of having the chainmail going down. Here I was trying to design some detail into the coat or jerkin or whatever the hell I call it of his noble clothes because um, European 1600s noble clothes um, had very intricate designs and etchings in it. I personally really do want to study other um, nobles clothes of different um, continents and different areas. Um, because again, other areas need more exposure. Europe has been done forever and that's part of my white privilege showing where I just default. Oh! Uh, noble means Europe. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I need to get better, and I'm always trying to learn and be better at being uh, anti-racist. Maybe I did say something racist. Hopefully I haven't said something mean. My bad. So now I'm going over in the lines. Um, dragonborn... Well, dragons, especially the ancient blue dragons, have a lot of horns. So I was thinking, ooh, if I can implement this well on the face, that'd be pretty cool. And these kind of seemed like fins or gills, like something you'd see on a triton. But at the same time, it was just the skin flaps. And I actually really like the design of the blue dragons uh, in the monster manual. And so I just tried to emulate that and um, kind of pay tribute to that as much as I could in this design itself. Good 
gonna drink my water. Oh, yes. I put that it said cotton because later when I'm rendering it, I wanted to make sure that um, I can at least see the texture in the way I'm letting like light hit the coat or jacket or what the hell you call it. Yeah, they had a lot of riffles in noble 1600 Europe. Why is that? If there's any history buffs watching, uh, I'm gonna pull a classic YouTuber and hey, hey, be sure to leave a comment and subscribe below. Ah, yes, adding detail to the different items is important. And texture, I mean. And now the the um, what do you call it? The recording finally fixed itself with the cropping thing. By the way, if anyone out there also uses, um, so I was recording on a PC, if anyone else also uses the in, uh, Windows 10 Xbox recorder to record their footage, uh, let me know if you also had that problem with the screen cropping, because that's what I was using. Here I was trying to add some depth and mass and some interesting qualities to the tail itself. See, tails are something I never think about. But, hopefully, because a lot of D&D characters are basically furries, which is, like I said, is totally cool, working on this is going to help me uh, prepare myself for whenever I get commissions if someone wants to do a tabaxi, uh, a leonin, because, that, yeah, with the new module coming out, uh, Theros. I bet a lot of people are going to be playing Leonin. And uh, Tortles. What else do we got? Lokatha. Grung. There's a lot. And honestly, it's pretty cool. Actually, oh, I wrote Yo again. Oh, I'll, I'll focus on the drawing again. Now, drawing fire in line work? That's a bit difficult because fire doesn't have like black lines or anything like this. Oh, I realized that the foot needed to be uh, shortened a bit in order to make the pose seem more not f so forward and more like the foot going back. Um, but yeah, fire, it doesn't have black lines in it and it's a bit of an abstract shape and sometimes it's transparent, sometimes it's not. Uh, this just me doing more chainmail texture. So what I tried to do was I tried to make a lot of bold lines because in fire, there are a lot of crisp lines. Like if you look at uh, orange and red fire just at a campfire at dead of night, you can see some clear carved lines in the fire itself of just the orange fire, uh, making itself super present and not translucent or transparent at all. But some of the other bits of the fire is transparent. So with the chainmail and thinking about that elbow dog, hey, what up? I decided to, when I was making lines through it, I decided to make the lines that went through the fire um, because I was using a uh, Cintiq tablet, which I know I'm very privileged to be able to say I have a Cintiq tablet. I will not take that for granted. Uh, the pressure of, oh, yeah, the pressure of the, what do you call it, the pen? Yeah is important uh, so I decided to do harder pressure when it was not in the fire and then lighter pressure um, when it was going over the fire in order to give that fire a sense of presence there's okay there's a proper art term that I'm not getting right maybe it's volume it, because it's hard because fire doesn't have mass it's a lot of abstract thinking that goes into art which is why artists deserve to be paid So you can kind of see the light, dif the value difference in between where the, on the chainmail, where the fire was going through and where there wasn't fire going over. It's subtle, but it is there. And here I was going over some line work, which will be a bit pointless in a second because it was later then that I stepped back from my painting, zoomed out, which is very important to do. It's not a painting, by the way, it's Photoshop. Um, because once you step back and look at your drawing, how whatever medium you're using you're able to get the broader version of the picture instead of just 
I am notorious for looking in, doing a ton of detail in a super tiny area, and then when I step back to look at it, the tiny area of detail doesn't complement the rest of the picture at all. And so it's just like a little box of all this work that basically doesn't complement anything in the painting at all. It's not coherent. And this is when I realized, oh, I got to shorten up the hand and that's what I did. I, also, stepping back also helps you get down proportions really well. I think we're coming down to the end of the portrait. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Th this was the line work version of uh, Shin the Sorcerer Paladin. If you want to get line work done, this is kind of what you'll be expecting to see. Um, I can try... Nah, I don't have any hints left that I can show of rendering of uh, the re black and white rendered version but i can give you a link to my other social media oh here's some stuff that's how i got to use the music regardless yeah i will leave stuff in the description below thank you so much for watching um i'm gonna be that guy if you want to see more time lapse videos and whatnot uh you can like you can subscribe no pressure whatsoever